We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. How are you doing today? I'm doing okay. Hi, Austin. Uh, <laughs> now they're going to have an argument down in the chat. We're, 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 you know, just let's go off the rails from the beginning. They're going to have an argument. They're about to have an argument down in the chat about who harasses me the most. And quite frankly, um, wow, Odin stealing Austin's bit. Okay, they're going to have a fight. We need to focus, though. Uh, we're doing a recruiting episode. Um, it's part two, uh, just some updates since our last recruiting episode. We also have some uh, Ask Sloopcast questions uh, specifically for recruiting that we're going to be doing this episode. Um, Kyle, the biggest news, and we 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 told you, we didn't tell you it was going to happen, but it was kind of an open secret, so we hinted at it pretty damn hard. Uh Dylan Rayola committing to Ohio State. Uh, he is the number one quarterback, according to the 24-7 sports proper rankings. Not the composite. The composite have him, has him at number two quarterback. But according to the 24-7 proper rankings, uh, he is not only the number one quarterback in the 2024 class. Let's let's emphasize that real quick. This is the 2024 class. But the number one overall player, Kyle, in the entire country, period. That's good, right? That's good. It's, you know, it literally, Kyle, it literally mathematically does not get better. If you look at yeah. 24 7 sports proper rankings, not, not yeah. composite, yeah, is, he has like seven spots to make up. Yeah, the, this, kid, this kid's out of uh, Chandler, Arizona, uh, 6'3, 225. Made, made a couple of visits already to Ohio State um, last fall. Uh, going into his junior year here, high expectations. Yeah, I. It's a, it's a, it's a it's a good. It's a good first commit for the twenty twenty four class. And, literally, and then, and then you literally doesn't get him. better. <laughs> you build it off of him. Yeah, and he's already like actively recruiting other kids for 2024. He actually kind of, again, when I say it was kind of an open secret that he was going to commit to Ohio state, it's been an open secret for, I think since the spring game, like it's a thing that everyone kind of knew what was happening, but most people have the integrity not to, to uh, steal the kid's shine. So, um, y you know, not just, just letting, letting the kid have his day. Um, most people have that sort of integrity. But, uh, yeah, like I said, he's been actively recruiting guys. I, I don't know. I don't know, gangland. Who could I be talking about? Um, including Jeremiah Smith, who is the number one wide receiver in the class. Um, and based on how Jeremiah Smith is responding to some of that Twitter, um, Twitter recruiting, I, I, you know, I'm starting to think maybe. I'm starting to think maybe. Uh, that there might be some uh, might be some hope there. Might be a little bit of hope there that Ohio State might uh, go two for two on uh, two of the best offensive players in the entire country. Mm -hmm. Do we need yeah. more skill players or O line? Yes. The the answer to that one, Nomad, is yes. It's not it's not an either or. It's not or. There's no or. Both. You have to keep you have to keep reloading. This is 2024. We have to keep in mind, like this is 2024. Some of the 2022 kids aren't even on campus yet. So do we need skill players? Yes, yes, we do. Always need skill players. And by the way, just having like the number one recruiting, or excuse me, the number one recruit in the class, that's that's how you start. That's how you start. Like, that's how this is how you build an elite class by essentially saying, hey, guys, we're out in front now. You want you want a part of this? You. Hey, 2024 kids. You, you want in on this or not? Nah? We only got like 24 spots left. There's like. Several hundred recruits out there. We're talking to maybe 100 or so of them. You want in or not? Nah? We only. We only got a few spots over here. You want in? Exactly. You want in? No? Yes? Better hurry. 
I kind of think I kind of think that's what's going to happen at the running back. Since we're just talking recruiting, screw it. I kind of think that's what you're going to see that happen with the running back situation in the 2023 running back situation, where they're going to have uh, two of the best running backs in the 2023 class, both in um, during the same week. During the same week, um, they're going to have. Um, hold on, I'm blanking on a name. Give me a second here. Um, yeah, they're going to have, uh, I think, uh, Justin Haynes and Richard Young, both not like you could pronounce it either way. I, they were, they were, they were both pretty easy. I was about to say, well, I did it, but like the, it was Young and Hayes. Like, I'm not going to brag too hard on that. Mm -hmm. Um, having both, uh, Young and Hayes coming in because these are two really great running backs. And you basically have, because there's already a running back, Mark Fletcher, committed to Ohio State in the 2023 class. So you you basically have one running back spot left. You're going to bring Hayes in and Richard Young in at the same time. And like at some point, I have to imagine at some point, maybe it comes from Ryan Day. Um, maybe it doesn't. Uh, maybe some good cop, bad cop. Maybe Ryan Day has to play some bad cop. And just be like, hey, you're both here. We got one spot left. Who wants it? <laughs> we we have one position. We have one position left. Who wants it? That being Speaking said, of- I'm still pretty sure Richard Young's heading to Bama. I think it's between Ohio State and Bama. But I, mean, I, think, I think Bama's the lean right now. Yeah. So speaking of like young players here, uh, this was a first for Ohio State. I'm not sure if you saw this or not, Jared. First time Ohio State has uh, made a scholarship offer to a to an eighth grader. Is that true? It is true. Yes. Are well, we sure that's true? Because I'm pretty sure they did it a while back, um, and it didn't it didn't end well. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I can't remember the young man's name. Um, welcome Kabuto. Uh, I can't remember the young man's name, uh, but he, you say Tate Martell, but Tate Martell is the one that replaced him in that class. Tate, they, when Tate Martell committed, it kind of chased off the, the kid. Um, I can't remember his name. It's, I suppose it doesn't matter. He's up from the Canton area, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, Google it for me, uh, if you can. Um, I think just like 2020, I think it was like 2014. Um, is Dan? I can't remember his name. Um, it's okay. He ended up going to a bunch of different schools, including Kentucky at one point. It's it, it's fine. Um, yeah. so, so, so this I, kid... Uh... I don't think it's the first time. Okay. Uh, so this kid's name's uh, Tyler Atkins, Atkinson, excuse me. Uh, big guy, right? Eighth, so eighth grader. He's already 6'3", 190 pounds, uh, 2026 class. Um, not even going to mention much more um, after after we're done with this section here about him. But yeah, how's it going after eighth grade? You don't really see that. Like I just said, you don't see that often at all, but and yeah, they're, they're definitely something that Ohio State really likes about him. He's a Georgia kid you know, already has a lot of um, offers already from the usuals, Georgia, uh, Auburn, um, a lot of the SEC schools around him, too. Yeah, and for, and for what it's worth, Ryan Montgomery, who is a 2025 kid, has had a scholarship offer sitting in his pocket for a minute now. Um, now, I'm sure at least some of that is aided by the fact that Ohio State uh, really, really wanted to sign his brother. So, of course, <laughs> but but he was also very good in his own right. Don't don't make you know, don't don't misunderstand that. He also yeah. earned the scholarship on his own. He may have gotten it a little bit sooner uh, because, you know, you, you're trying to get trying to get the big brother to uh, to sign on that dotted line. Uh, don't risk yeah. talking about that kid's wiggle. Yeah, that's that's a good that's a good point. 
uh, don't don't talk about an eighth grader's wiggle. <laughs> that's a, that's a that is a good call. All right, um, we're, we're going to change the subject here, Jared. Uh, <laughs> I didn't say it. Kabuto said it. Cancel him. <laughs> All right, uh, <laughs> and I said don't for the record. I just kicked a bottle of liquor that I keep underneath my desk. Don't ask why it's there. All right, uh, what else? What else in the um, in the recruiting background do you want to do? What I talk about next here? Do you want to? Uh, we we briefly mentioned Saraveld, uh, and that is how yeah. you pronounce it. I've taught. I <laughs> laid an egg hard last week trying to pronounce his name, and I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna take some time this week. We're going to, we're going to get this right. Saraveld, Austin Saraveld. That is how you say it. I promise. So, um, <laughs> ask Janet, why does Jared keep a bottle of liquor under his desk? Convenience, Odin convenience. That's why, um, this is the third Ohio state, excuse me, the Ohio third state of Ohio offensive lineman signed by uh, Ohio State, or excuse me, they, they didn't sign yet. He's hard committed to Ohio State. Um, you have to you have to take two things into note here. One, that Ohio that there are three Ohio State caliber offensive linemen, and when I say Ohio State caliber, I mean like no, and no offense to some of the other kids they've signed in recent years. These are like actual, when am I getting the tattoo? I will get the tattoo. No worries. I just have to actually, you know, schedule it and whatnot. COVID makes that a little bit difficult, but it's happening. I promise. Um, three. So, you know, like I said, three, not, not reaching because they've signed like three offensive linemen and not all of them, if we're being honest, were really Ohio state caliber. They were developmental kids and whatnot, but these are actual Ohio state caliber offensive linemen. Look at their other offers. Look at who else wanted them. Um, Sarah Veld had an offer from Bama and Notre Dame and, and other placing other places. So, you know, even if you look at that and say, you know, national two fifty, it's still pretty dang high. And again, look at the scholarship offers and he's been on a rocket ride trajectory because I think when Ohio state offered him, he wasn't even ranked by anyone anywhere. So mm -hmm. guys on a rocket ship up the rankings, um, you know, there are talks about him playing tackle. He's an interior guy, I would say at the next level. But, um, but the point here is that if you look Ohio state, because Ohio, Ohio State lost this a bit under Urban Meyer. And with everything going on with Notre Dame sort of focusing in on the state of Ohio like they are because of the coaches that they are and have, um, it has become, and this might be a reaction to NIL and Transfer Portal and sort of the changing landscape of college football recruiting, Ohio State's putting that fence back up around Ohio, which, you know, has not been a solid fence. Again, it, after a couple years of Urban Meyer, it just wasn't a high priority for him. Well, let's let's not forget, too, it's not a big urgency right now, but keep an eye out on Cincinnati moving up, moving to a Power 5 conference now. For as keep long as the Big 12 as well. exists. <laughs> Currently. Because this isn't this isn't the first time this isn't the first time that uh, Cincinnati joined a Power Six. It was six then, a Power Six conference, uh, and like I said, it was used to be six. What whatever happened to the Big East, Kyle? It went bye byes. That's what happened to the Big East. Yeah. So I mean, like they're in a they're in a Power Five conference for now. But, yeah. but it's, it's on, on his it, question, though, is Oklahoma is, without Oklahoma in Texas is is the Big Twelve really a Power Five conference? Different question to be explored on a different day, but maybe maybe, maybe a wasteland question. Yeah, because we are Jared officially in the wasteland now. Now that uh, spring camp's over, the we're, we're, a lot we're, of I, the we're after the draft. I think that's the official. Yes. The draft is, you know, you you always like 
I don't know if these are real signs or not, but you see it on TV. Someone's driving into the desert and it'll be like, last gas station for X number of miles. That's what the draft is. <laughs> the draft is that last gas station. Yeah. All right. Uh, one of the big things here that we've seen recently, we're going to jump Luke into the 2020. Luke is just waiting for Day to go back to the NFL. Day's not going back to the NFL. No. Uh, so we're going to jump into the uh, 2023 class here, Jared. Uh, one of the things that's been big news the past week or so here has been crystal balls. Crystal balls is more so with uh, this standout uh, Brandon Innes, uh, the the, n- the number one uh, wide receiver per the 24-7 sports composite rankings in favor for Ohio State. A lot, lot of um, a lot of crystal balls going to Ohio State here. Uh, so, w- what more can you tell us about about these recent crystal balls, or or more so, what uh, the question we have, <laughs> question we got was, does the crystal balls in in meaning in means for Ennis told Oklahoma to to fuck off? Uh, first off, I don't. And like he's reacting specifically, I assume Gangland is in the chat uh, to um, Brandon Dunn Drum, uh, Brandon Drum, who's an Oklahoma insider. Uh, I don't know if he entered his crystal ball or if he flipped his crystal ball, um, but he's an OU insider for twenty four seven flips or enters a crystal ball uh, to Ohio State. Um, So did he tell Oklahoma, I don't think has been in on this for a long time. Just so we're clear, um, Brandon Ennis has basically been Ohio State or for a very long time. Now, the the funny thing is, yeah, since Riley left, the funny thing is, is that it's always Ohio State or. Has anyone else ever noticed that? It was Ohio State or Notre Dame. It was Ohio State or... USC, Ohio State or Oklahoma. It's always been Ohio State or. That or keeps changing. But it's always Ohio State. Draw your own conclusions on that one. Ohio State or Florida State. Exactly. Like, it's it's always been Ohio State or. What, what does that tell you? Why is it always Ohio State or? Well, when you when you got a when you got a wide receiver coach, right? But, but like, if it's like it's Ohio State or Florida State. Well, Florida State is not a thing anymore. Now it's Oklahoma. Oklahoma is not a thing anymore. Now it's USC. It's always Ohio State, and then some other storyline. Yeah. Jackson State. We'll but, see how know, that answer, experiment goes. To answer your question, Gangland. Yes. I guess that pretty much <laughs> means that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I they're, guess. They're not going to. They're not going to stop. But, but yes. The, but they, they've not been like like so many of the other Oklahoma recruits, especially on the offensive side of the ball. It was never about Oklahoma. It was never about Oklahoma. It was about Lincoln Riley. And we'll see how they do once the. Uh, NIL demons catch up to them in Tennessee and Texas A&M and some of the other people. Now that the NCAA, NCAA has decided they are, they're actually going to enforce some of these NIL rules. Yeah. Um, did USC even get the 85 scholarship guys? No, I don't believe so. I, no. I think they're still pretty far off that mark. Um, uh, so, so another 2023 kid here, Jared, uh, Florida buck in our discord says, Downs heating up for us. And he's talking about uh, Caleb yeah. Downs, uh, the kid out of uh, Mill Creek High School in um, in Georgia. One one of one of actually the best safety in the twenty twenty three class. Yeah, uh, the best safety in the twenty twenty three class, and out of the heart of of Georgia Bulldog territory. Like Ohio State's pulled kids out of Georgia before. Pulled kid yeah. out, kids out of Savannah, 
pull pull kids out, you know, especially like sometimes in the Savannah, they're military kids. Sometimes they pull kids out of the Atlanta area. Um, Caleb Downs is 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 practically straight out of like he's not he's he's not from Athens, Georgia, but it's damn close. Like it's straight out of the backyard. Um, well, he he's from Ken- Kennesaw. Is that where is that where Fields is from? But you know, he got there through through Georgia. I don't know if that counts or not. This would be a statement for Ohio State. Getting Caleb Downs would be a statement for one, Ohio State's moving to like this three safety s- system, right? Moving to this three safety system. So now you're saying, hey, um, best safety in the entire 2023 class. Um we went from having one safety to three, which means we got spots open and we want to make you a star. If Ohio State can go into the heart of just Georgia, and when I say Georgia, I mean University of Georgia recruiting territory and snag this kid. Ooh, that, that, that's... That would be huge. That's a statement yeah, that, recruit. That, that, that's a yeah, statement that, that recruiting be... maneuver if they can pull pull off Caleb Downs. And by the way, like I wouldn't even have, I wouldn't even included him in the conversation of you know uh, a couple months ago. Yeah. Um, and now yeah. he's at least in the spreadsheet. I wouldn't didn't even have him in this because it was just like nah, nah, that's not yeah. happening. Yeah, I mean that that'd be like Texas getting a the the top recruit that's in. That's in Westerville or Pickerington. Yeah, I'm mean, legitimately like, I mean, Notre Dame has stolen a couple kids right out of Ohio State's backyard, and that hurt. You know, it's almost I mean, just like recently, just recently. Uh, yeah, Brennan Vernon, um, mentor Ohio is not like right out of Columbus, but damn close enough. Uh, a couple kids from Dayton. Um, yeah, and. Uh, Gangland says Sonny Styles back there too, and he's talking about having him back there as a safety. But like, Sonny Styles was seriously considering Notre Dame. Like, and that, you would talk about stealing a kid straight out of Ohio, uh, straight out of Ohio State territory. That's that's a Pickerington kid. That is one of Ohio State's best pipelines in in Central Ohio recently is Pickerington. Like, if you could have stolen him. That you know, that's a huge statement if you're Notre Dame. Um, and this would be that for Ohio State to go into Georgia right after they win a national title and steal one of the best players straight out of their backyard would be enormous. Yep, yep. Uh, so Gangland has a question for us, Jared. Uh, who are the top three recruits that would make an immediate impact in their position group? Are you talking like 2023 kids who could contribute right away? Is that the question, Gangland? Yes. He says yes. All right. Um, let me let me pull the spreadsheet up. Um, while, Jared, while Jared's pulling that up, I'll, I'll put a little spiel in here. Hey, be sure, be sure to check us out on the um, Discord. Uh, we'll put the links in the doobly-doos, how to get to the Discord, but simply just... Look for Sloopcast. Join. We're we're, we're a good. Um, it's a great community that um, we've built out with um, great people. To talk with with a wide variety of topics or non-sport topics too. Uh, and if you want a little bit more content, become a Patreon. It's only only three dollars a month. You get get exclusive content and you get an episode dedicated to you all. Um, Sloop cats. That is. Uh, <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, it's a it's a good time and it's a. It's a great community here, so be sure to be sure to join us. Kyle, I had the spreadsheet pulled up a while ago, but you were on a roll. I was going to let you keep going. That's 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 our ad break. That was that was our mid episode. Although we're way past mid at this point, that was our mid episode ad break. We just sponsored ourselves. By the way, I was thinking about this, and I haven't run it by Kyle yet, but I don't think he'll disagree. Um, if you get if if you guys can get if you guys can get our Patreon over four hundred dollars a month. We won't accept sponsors anymore. We'll, we'll close. We'll close sponsorship. No more. No more 
uh, like they'll still be like if we get YouTube, if we get to the point where we can do YouTube ads, we'll still do those and they'll still be like ads through uh, our podcast host. Like we won't be turning those off, but we won't seek sponsorship anymore. If you can get our if you can get our, our Patreon over four hundred dollars so no more like ad reads by Kyle or I. Uh, and, and again, I haven't like Kyle hasn't. This is the first time Kyle's heard me say this. So no guarantee on that yet, but uh, I'll, I'll throw a goal up on the Patreon. If I'll throw a goal up on the Patreon, if uh, if Kyle and I decide we're actually going to do that. But Kyle and I need to talk about that before we make it official. What if we want to do an ad? Um, I'll make an exception if you are if you are a, a patron. If you're just a casual patron, uh, I'll, I'll make an exception for you. Yep. All right. All right, Jared. You got the Back to the up. question. Yeah. Um, top three top three recruits that would make an immediate impact in their position group for the 2023 class. You're going to lose some offensive linemen. And to ask any of the offensive linemen to step in and contribute right away might be a lot. Um, but the, the first name that, pops in my head is Luke Montgomery. Um, you could see him be on the same track that you've seen. And, and by the way, it could be Saraveld. You could see the, uh, them on the same track that, you know, like, like Paris Johnson Jr. is on start at guard, you know, a young starter at guard, then gets bumped out the tackle with, you know, after a year or so experience. Uh, I think that's incredibly possible. Um, I think that there's going to be lots of opportunity at the safety position. Um, so, you know, we were literally just talking about, you know, one of the best safeties in the entire country in the 2023 class, Caleb Downs. If Caleb Downs comes to Ohio State and he's everything that he's supposed to be, which I have no reason to believe he isn't, that could be an immediate impact player. Mm -hmm. Even if he's not starting at safety, even if he's rotating at safety, even if he's, that's an immediate impact player. Um, th those are two of the names that pop into my head right away. Um, going back to the spread. Well, I, I gave you three cause I included Sarah Veld in there. Like, I think they're going to need some offensive line help next year. I really, they're going to lose two tackles again. Um, and I think, you know, you probably end up bumping one of your current guards out the tackle. But, you know, two years in a row losing two tackles. What about the transfer portal in that situation? Literally everyone needs tackles all the time. There aren't enough college level. There aren't enough like power five level offensive tackles in the country. There's just not enough ever. It's like having yeah. two good corners. Unless you're a school that is really, really good at recruiting corners, like Ohio State, like LSU, um, Alabama, obviously. Um, no one has two good corners all the time. No one has yeah. two, good, two good offensive tackles all the time. Period. Um, you know, except, like I said, except for the people who can recruit them. So everyone needs an offensive tackle and like whether you're Ohio state needs you, what Ohio state really needs, what Ohio state really, really, really needs is for Paris Johnson jr. To this is a weird thing. This, this is weird. It would actually help Ohio state. If Paris Johnson jr. Has like one of the best years an offensive tackle has ever had at Ohio state. And then leaves because you're losing him and that sucks. But the ripple effect of finally getting an offensive tackle drafted in the first round, which Ohio state's been on a really bad drought on and that's killing them in recruiting. Ohio state has not had an offensive tackle drafted in the first round since 2015. Ty, Ty, Tyler Decker, whenever, yeah, it was Decker, but I was just trying to name the year. Um, would be huge for Ohio. Yeah. Okay. It was 2015. Um, 
Taylor, excuse me. I always, I always call him Tyler. It's Taylor. Yeah, 2016, 2016, Taylor Decker. Uh, yeah. So it's, despite having some really good recruits, they've not turned many of those really good offensive tackle recruits into first round offensive linemen. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, look, and again, like it's Bama. They're the best at recruiting, like period. They are. Um, look at how many offensive tackles like you, you talk about, we, we joke about how like, well, who's the next cornerback at Ohio state to get drafted in the first round, just because it happens that often. And we'll be talking about that, about the wide receivers and quarterbacks here in the next few years. Yeah, like, well, it's just a guarantee you're going to get picked in the first round. That's what it's like to play left tackle at Alabama. Oh, well, you're good enough to be the left tackle at Alabama. You're going to go in the first round and Ohio well, state is not that right now. And Ohio state needs to end that drought. They need to be able to say, look, our new offensive line coach came in and then immediately, immediately Paris Johnson jr. Goes in the first round. And then you can sell that. Well, Billy price was in the first round as a guard or center. Yeah. I said center. offensive, uh, in offensive 2018. Tackle. Yeah. Offensive okay. tackle. I was offensive. Right, fair tackle. enough. Uh, so my three Cent players. Cent Ohio, State, answer, um, Ohio State gets the best centers. Why does Ohio State get the best centers? Billy Price and among others. And, you know, they didn't they have like three years in a row with the what's is it? Is it the Remington? Yeah, it was like two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Two or three years in a row where they had their where the Ohio State Center won the best center award. Um mm -hmm. So that's why we always talk about, does Ohio State have enough interior offensive linemen? You know, how are the guards? How are the tackles? We never worry. When's the last time we were worried about the center position? Ohio State, you know, the Miller situation is well documented. You lose Harry Miller, but like even losing Harry Miller, who should have been like a cornerstone of that position for Ohio State, they just kind of you know, then it was next guy up like you would if it was an ACL injury, but that's, you know, the, the game still has to get played. And, but you know, we, we know who's going to be playing center at Ohio state for the next few years, yep. but we can't say uh, the same about so, tackle. So the answer to gangland's question here, uh, top three recruits. Uh, yeah. Luke Montgomery, definitely obvious. Um, one of the obvious, um, options here, but I would go with the other ones. You know, I'll go with Ty Lockwood. I, I think Ty might be your next Jeremy Ruckert in the tight end position here. So I would I would say Ty would have an immediate impact in his position when it when he comes in. He's already six five, two twenty five. Put a little bit more muscle in that, and you got you got a threat out of you got a threat at that tight end position too. Yeah, and if we look at some of the other kids who aren't currently, excuse me, committed, but who Ohio State has really good relationships with, um, linebacker is still of a concern, especially from a depth standpoint for Ohio that's, State right now. So that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I was thinking Tackett about Curtis, Troy yep. Bowles, um, some of the other linebackers who are excellent, who are they are currently in on. I think those would be acceptable answers here as well. Yep. No, absolutely. But I'm going to, but if I'm, if I'm forced to go three, Ohio State both has and will sign some great wide receivers in this class, but it's just the, the wide receiver room is so stacked. I don't expect anything from any of the freshmen right away. Um, so I'm going to go Luke Montgomery, Tackett Curtis and Caleb Downs. And that's a bold statement considering two of those guys aren't committed. Yeah, <laughs> I feel good about about Curtis eventually committing, though. Mm -hmm. Caleb Downs, like I'm more optimistic than I should be, but I acknowledge that I'm more optimistic than I should be. Mm -hmm. All right. I think I think those are all the po talking points we want to do for the, this recruiting episode. Anything anything else you want to touch base with, Jared? Uh, maybe give our guys down in the live chat an opportunity to ask one more question if they want to fellas, anything, any last recruiting questions? 
going once, going twice, three times. Okay. Uh, I think they're probably good. Uh, who will be our best coach in recruiting this year? 2023 cycle or 2024 cycle? 24. Well, I mean, quite <laughs> frankly, at this point, Uh, <laughs> it's it, it, it's kind of it's kind of kind of hard to not say Corey Dennis right now. Yeah, as funny <laughs> as it sounds, like it's Corey Dennis because like he's the only guy to sign someone right now, um, and we could have that conversation about you know is it Corey Dennis or is it Ryan Day? Uh, Corey Dennis is still lead recruiter, um, and then of course Brian Hartline, right? Like, by the yeah. way, we we talk about how uh, Ohio State's been getting all the quarterbacks they want. Again, like the five star after five star after five yeah. star. It's crazy. You know, I was thinking Alfred, he runs it for a lot of recruits. Yeah. Um, but I'm just. What we have to think about when, when we're talking about. Um, how Ohio State's getting all the quarterbacks they want. Brian Hartline deserves some credit there, too. Because if you're a quarterback, <laughs> if you're a quarterback and you see Ohio State signing five star after five star after five star wide receivers, you know that, that makes it a little bit easier to pull that trigger. So Brian Hartline gets some credit there too. But also, if you're going to do that, you got to go vice versa. Mm -hmm. Day and Dennis get some credit for all the wide receivers that are coming in because of the constant stream of five star quarterbacks. Yep. Let the shenanigans begin. Stewart's here. Stuart, real quick, you have to do, you have to do it quickly. Do you have a recruiting question? Gotta let gotta gotta let Stuart get a get a thing in. He said nope. All right, I gave him the opportunity. That is all that matters. Um, right. So that's it. That's the end of this episode. Um, stick around though, Stuart, because we're doing an Ask Sloopcast right after this. So I don't want to, I know you just got here. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you're not going to stick around. Fine. Don't you, you, this is a free country. You can go wherever you want. Um, all right, Kyle, that's the end of the episode. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? You already, I, I was going to do I, all the spiel, but you kind of already I, did it. I do. So then I didn't know I, what to say. So now I'm just going to say, Hey, do you have anything for Kyle? I do, corner? Jared. I do. Cool. Can you get it out the brooms, Jared? Can you get the broom? Because Ohio State men's and women swept the Big Ten track and field championships. Nice. Bring out the brooms there. You said the Big Ten champions? Yep, they are Big Ten champions. And I feel... Here it is. Uh, I, I was looking at her. Um, uh In, in, in a Sloopcast fashion, I can't pronounce the names, but... Uh, <laughs> ah, boom, boom. Uh, Adeliade, I, I think is how you say her name. Four-time Big Ten That's champion. Four-time Big Ten champion in the shot put. She's, she's, she's going on to try to make it her third time as a national champion this year. Yeah, you, you can't do much better than that. <laughs> four years, four, four titles. Can't do any better than that. Yeah, it's you literally mathematically can't do any better. And that's how you bookend the show. Tonight's ending music will be brought to you by a Columbus based band. I am wearing their t-shirt. Uh, this is Courtney from work. They have a couple live shows. They have a couple live shows lined up. I'll be going to one of them. I'm not going to tell you which one. Cause, cause I'm a stinker like that. Uh, but I am going to one of them. So uh, you check it out. I'm sure you can find, I uh, you go on bands in town guys. If you don't have bands in town on your phone, that's literally a, a thing that tells you what bands are in town. It's great. It's fantastic. Look it up. Um, so with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Courtney from work. <laughs>